Hey what's going on everybody it's Shade here and today I'm doing something special on the channel. So today I have a very special guest for all of you guys. His name is Gerald from Gerald Undone and he makes some great content on YouTube about filmmaking and cinematography. So you make sure and go check his channel out. So today's video is about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K which is about to be released in the next month which is October 2018 and you will guys get to see our thoughts on this camera. So let's start today's video. So you might have heard of the black magic, I mean not this black magic but we are lucky enough to see in India but the black magic design company who makes some professional cameras for filmmakers. So they recently announced the black magic pocket cinema camera 4k which is about to be released in the next month and this is a budget camera for filmmakers. So here are some of our thoughts on this camera. So this camera is direct competitor to the GH5S and I'm that point in life where I want to upgrade from a Canon 70D to a new camera. So you will see me comparing both of these cameras in this video. So starting from the sensor the camera have a 8 megapixel micro four third sensor and I know a lot of you guys are already pissed because of that micro four third sensor and even at some point I'm also pissed about the micro four third sensor but let me change your mind. So why most of the people are upset about the micro four third sensor and it's the shallow depth of field and that's why people move towards Sony full frame cameras. But the issues with the Sony camera is the video codex and it doesn't record 10 bit 422 which the Panasonic GH5S and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K can do and that's okay if you don't want to do so much of color grading but if you decide to go heavy on those color grades then it will fall apart very quickly. So if your projects need heavy color grade then this is the camera you want to go for as this will record ProRes 10-bit 422 which doesn't fall apart on those color grades and for your concern about the micro four third sensor you can also get the speed booster which will convert your micro four third camera into a full frame camera. I know it adds to the cost of the camera but when you break down the cost of this package then you will get to see some new results. So let me show you guys. So the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera is priced at $1,300 which is 1 lakh 8,000 rupees in India. Now if you add up the Metabone Speed Booster XL which is $649 or 45,000 rupees if you have good relatives living outside India. So the total is $1,949 or 1 lakh 54,000 rupees which is a price of A7 III. So at this price you are getting a camera with 10 bit 422 and also you are getting a full frame camera with the speed booster. So those were the things that changed my mind a lot about this Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. But now let's see what Jarrell has to say about the other features of this camera. Hey Shade, thanks for having me on. You know it's actually kind of funny because ever since the announcement of the Pocket Cinema 4K I don't think a day has gone by where somebody hasn't asked me what I thought about the camera. But I haven't actually Actually talked about it very much at all until now. So here goes. One of the things that I love most about this camera is probably the most obvious one, but just all of the recording options when it comes to frame rate, codec, bit depth, and storage media. This camera is very exciting when it comes to that, and I love that you're not limited to using only the internal card slots, but the fact that you can use conventional SSDs over USB-C is outstanding. In fact, I like the whole array of ports, not just the USB-C, but the DC power port that comes with an included AC adapter for continuous power, the full-size HDMI port, and the mini XLR port that has 48 volt phantom power for professional grade micro phones. I really feel cared for as a customer when a company thinks to include all these features. That being said though, one complaint that I can see people having when it comes to the ports is Blackmagic's choice to go with the two pin limo instead of something more conventional like a DTAP, which of course is going to require people to get adapters for the DTAP to limo, and they're probably going to want to do that because I can see battery life being an issue with this camera. I mean, I think it's great that they're using a ubiquitous battery like the LPE6, but I do not think people are going to be satisfied with their runtime using that battery when they're fully utilizing the camera with 4K60, a 5 inch touchscreen and trying to power an external drive over USB-C, I think they're going to want external batteries. What do you think Shade? Yeah Gerald I totally agree on that. The Canon LPE6 batteries are not meant to last long. So you need to rely on some external sources that is the Sony NPF batteries or the V-mount batteries. And one more feature that this camera is lacking which is the lack of IBIS. The in-body image stabilization. I know a lot of people say that in-body image stabilization is not good for professional filmmakers as professional filmmakers rely on some external image stabilization. But this camera is for indie filmmakers and some advanced filmmakers. And most of us don't have access to the gimbal. So if they have have included the iBase into this camera, it would be a great feature. What do you think, Gerald? For sure, I would have loved to see IBIS in this model, but I wasn't really expecting it because they're obviously positioning it as a cinema camera. I mean, it's in the name after all. Funny too is in the name, it also says pocket. 
but I don't think it's that small. I mean, it's small compared to an Ari Alexa, but it's significantly larger than its mirrorless hybrid counterparts. And despite how big it is, it's not weather sealed. Yeah, I know it's not weather sealed, but I think we need to compromise here at this price point. But I want to take a moment here and talk about the 5 inch display on this camera. So the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K have a 5 inch touch screen on the back, which is great if you want to monitor your video or focus the subject, which is great. But one thing I do want to address here is that it is not fully articulating screen, which means you will need an external monitor if you want to film yourself like I'm doing right now. But anyways, the display is awesome as also you can include LUTs into this camera and also you can bake them into the video if you want to do so. Yeah, I like a lot about this screen, but I can't help but think that it would have benefited from having flip out or swiveling capabilities because what I love about this camera the most is its recording options and its SSD compatibility, which makes it not rely on an external recorder at all. So then I have to bog this thing down, which already has a great screen with an external monitor just to get the ability to see it from different angles or be able to flip it out. It's kind of frustrating and it inflates the price of an already really cost effective camera. Don't get me wrong though, despite my minor complaints, I think this is a fantastic device for behind the camera work. I just don't think it's a good fit for something like vlogging because of its lack of usable continuous autofocus, IBIS, and a flip out screen. But for professional shooters, when it comes to value, I don't think there's ever been a better offering for something so feature rich at such a great price. I think Blackmagic has something pretty incredible here. I also have this feeling that Blackmagic Design has done a great job with this camera and they have set it up a benchmark for a camera at this price point with all these jaw dropping features. 5 inch display, 10 bit 4 to do video recording, Blackmagic color signs, inputs and outputs and also Blackmagic announced the Blackmagic RAW which is kind of similar to the Apple Pro as well and also the delay in the release of this camera. This is giving some clue that this might be included in the camera but nothing can be said until the release of this camera but otherwise this is a great camera for filmmakers but those were my thoughts on this camera anything you would like to add on this Gerald? thanks for having me on your channel shade it was a lot of fun you know me i love an opportunity to run my mouth about cameras whenever i can so thanks for that and uh yeah all right i'm done so those were our thoughts on this camera and also let me know guys if you want to see some more collabs on this channel in the comments down below and thank you so much gerald for coming on the channel gerald is a great guy he makes some great content on youtube so guys go and check his channel out so that was the today's video hope you guys enjoyed this and if you did just click the like button below and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like that and i'll catch you guys in the next one